Let's talk about screws. So if you're out in the field, you're typically using, you know, Phillips or Flathead. You might be coming across the Square Robbies or Robertsons. But when you look around in the electrical industry, there's tons of different heads. And I've always thought to myself, why are there so many different kinds of heads? Like, why is there not one universal standard head that fixes all the problems? And it's because there's different uses for each screw. So let's break into it a little bit. So typically what we're gonna find in America is that we use a slotted or flat head or we use a Phillips, which is the plus. The reason that these were developed is so that we could actually have a hand tool and work these things. They were not designed for drills. They were around way longer than drill motors were around. Problem with these is when you use them with drills or even you know just by hand sometimes, they slip, right? And that slipping can create a stripped out screw. So the flat and the Phillips have a kind of a stripping issue. And most of you know that because you've probably burned through tons of them doing this every day. So there needed to be some different kind of screw options that didn't have that slippage or that stripping. And that's why the Square or the Robertson or the Robbie was developed. And a lot of the time in the electrical industry, we put things on really tight. And so we need something that we can pull out. We can put a lot of torque behind either screwing it in or unscrewing it, but we don't have as much of a worry of stripping it out. It's pretty hard to, to strip out a square. Not impossible. <laughs> Those of you that love to use your hammer drill setting for every single thing that you do, probably gonna strip those out too. There's also Torx or Star. Allen heads, another type that's very similar. Allen heads, I find, are a little bit more likely to still strip out, especially like when your Allen key gets stuck in there and you're like wiggling it back and forth, trying to yank that thing out because they have a really tight tolerance most of the time. And the sizes are so close together between metric and standard that a lot of people are like jamming and hitting a metric size to try to get into a standard screw. So they do still strip out, but it's just harder to strip these ones out and they're more designed to be used with a drill. So a lot of times you'll be doing woodwork, like decking and stuff like that uses Torx because a lot of times they're driving long screws and the longer the screw is, the more turning that has to happen to get that entire screw sunk in, which is another reason why you'll see some screws that are threaded for the first few inches because really you just need to tap through a hole and once you got the hole in and that thing sunk like two or three inches, the rest of it doesn't need to be threaded. Um, depending on the situation though, you might run through all the threads and then the thing just slips because there's no more thread holding on the material that you're trying to screw into. So I don't like to use those a lot unless I have really thick material or if I know that I just need the screw to go through some material and it doesn't need to grab, but the meat of it at the end is what it needs to grab into, then I'll use screws like that. But the screws that are usually threaded all the way up from head to tip are, are typically what I choose to use. A little pro tip, if you strip out an Allen head, try using a Torx tip. If you can get that in there just right and get it to hold and use an impact driver, like an actual drill that impacts really slow, as it hammers, it kind of breaks it loose a little bit and it'll pull out. Then we've got some other weird ones that don't necessarily have to do with the shape of the slot that spins the screw. It's more about the actual design of the screw into whatever you're screwing. So we've got stuff like pan head screws. Pan head screws a lot of people will use um, because it allows a smooth finish on the top. So a lot of times in commercial, I'll use pan head screws to tap something in, to screw a box in or whatever, because it's just a smoother surface at the finish instead of it being a hex head that's sticking out. So a lot of times I'll use pan head screws. It's really just a preference thing, but what you're bound to with that is usually a Phillips tip. So you're still gonna be stripping those out. So a lot of people like to use the hex heads because you're not gonna strip a hex head out. So the other thing to consider is the gauge. A lot of screws have different gauges. They might be like a 10 gauge or a 12 gauge or an eight gauge. So understanding the gauging of a screw and how thick and how much you know meat you wanna be able to, to screw into something. If you're screwing into like really flat material, it doesn't matter how thick the screw is because all you're doing is creating a hole and trying to secure something. But if you've got material that's thick 
and you're trying to drill into it, the thicker gauge that you can get, the more surface area of tension that you're creating when you drill through that material. So it's gonna stick and adhere better. Um, the length of screw is another thing. Like with electrical, a lot of times I'm just working on like steel studs. So I just need to put a self-drilling screw into a, a box that's holding something to a piece of metal. So it doesn't really matter if I've got like one inch, if I've got three quarter, if I've got inch and a half, but I usually keep a plethora of lengths of screws on me. So I've got all kinds of these little stackable bins that I use. Usually I will fill like eight of those things. I'll stack four of them up high and I'll put that in the back of my truck. And I have got every screw option you could think of. I like to keep multiple different thread types too, because some threads are gonna be a lot more aggressive or coarse, meaning that their spiraling is a lot more spaced out. And then some things are finer thread, so they're tighter. The other thing to consider is, are you trying to drill into something that is solid or are you trying to go into a threaded hole? Let's also talk about the difference between a machine screw and a bolt and a screw. So screws are usually meant to fasten things, uh, usually softer material like drywall, wood, things like that. It's a flat, solid material and you're creating a hole and you're trying to get that screw to grab into a brand new hole you just drilled. That's a screw. When you're talking about a machine screw, that's a lot of people call these bolts, but they're not bolts. Machine screws are fully threaded from the head all the way down to the bottom. They're usually a really tight thread and they're meant to be put into a hole that is threaded. You can have 632s, uh, 1032, you can have 832s. That means it's an eight gauge thickness and it's 32 threads per inch. 632 is just a little bit skinnier. There's all kinds of different threading. So just make sure that you're using the right threading for the right holes. So machine screws and bolts are very similar. It's just that usually bolts have a certain portion of the screw from the head down that there is no threading. And then the rest of the way down, there's threading. That's a bolt and you'll have carrier bolts or carriage bolts. Some people call them either one, but it's the same kind of thing. It's just that it's got a flat head. So really the way that a carriage bolt is meant to be put in is you're supposed to pre-drill a hole. You're supposed to stick this carriage bolt through. There's no thread or anything for you to use a tool. The other side has a nut and a washer that goes on it. And that's the side that you're tightening with a wrench. So the head, they want to be really smooth. A lot of times in like playgrounds and decking and stuff like that, they'll use this because they don't want any rough edges that somebody can rub up against and cut themselves. So carriage bolt usually does not have threading the entire way. Usually it's like a four by four that you're trying to get through. So you don't need threading the whole way. You just need threading at the end so that that nut can hold something on. The rest of it can be smooth. Um, so machine screw, fully threaded, bolt, not so fully threaded. Uh, you can have lag bolts, which lag bolts kind of mix a hex head carriage bolt with a screw. It's much more coarse because it actually is meant to lag into something and hold. It's not just being bolted where you have two different things and you're sandwiching them together and running a bolt to hold them together. That's not the purpose. You're actually trying to drill and hold like a chandelier or something like that. You want as much surface area with as thick and stout of a bolt. If you got like a 150 pound chandelier you're hanging, a lot of times we will lag bolt those in place. So it's a sharp screw, it's got a coarse thread, and it usually has like a half inch or nine sixteenths head on it. And you're using a socket set or you're using a drill with a socket at the end of it to tighten that. And then the other thing is the, the actual function of the screw. So there are some screws that tap as they go. And when I say tap, I mean that they create threading as they're drilled. A self tapper or a self tapping screw is something that as you're drilling it, it's actually cutting threading into the hole. So it's for, to be used with a machine screw that goes into it. Self-drilling screws got this almost blade tip to it. So as it's turning, it's cutting and that's meant to cut through metal. So if you have a metal fixture or metal, you know, something, it's going to drill out that metal and create a hole just like a drill bit would do. And then once you puncture through it and you've created the hole, now it has threads to screw in. So I could cover every kind of screw out there. If you want, there's all kinds of security screws. There's one way screws so that you have a tool that when you put it in, it stays in, but there's no way to back it out. All kinds of crazy screws that you're going to come across, but understand each screw has like a specific reason or function as to why it is. It depends on the application. There's like weatherproofing. So if you're working in stainless, making sure you're using stainless, screws with stainless material. There's all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But anyways, that's the screws. It's everything you know you need to know about screws as, as an electrician, at least.